Now that we have done our first Java coding by having the Maven JXP2 plugin generate our Pojo classes for us, let's do a preview of the coding required for implementing the actual working SOAP endpoint. Before that, let's just revisit the comments that we made for ourselves in the configuration files, starting with the generate dynamic whistle element in our Spring Servlet XML Spring configuration file. So this is the dynamic whistle element we will add to the Spring WS Servlet XML. Here the ID determines the URL where the whistle can be retrieved. In this case, the ID is get insurance which means that the whistle can be retrieved as get insurance whistle in the servlet context. The full URL will typically be localhost 8080 spring ws insurance slash get insurance dot whistle. Next, we set the whistle port type to be insurance service. We set the location where the service can be reached as slash insurance service. We use a relative URI and we instruct the framework to transform it dynamically to an absolute URI. Hence, if the service is deployed to different contexts, we don't have to change the URI manually. For the location transformation to work, we need to add an init parameter to Spring WS Servlet in web.xml. We define the target namespace for the whistle definition itself. Setting this attribute is not required. If not set, the whistle will have the same namespace as the XSD schema. The XSD element refers to the insurance service schema we defined in our previous manual whistle generation tutorial. We simply place the schema in the web INF XSD subdirectory of the application. Now we get to our actual first class or interface that we have to write ourselves, which is the insurance service. We will need the insurance service and its implementation for use by our insurance spring SOAP web service endpoint. For tutorial purposes, we will use a simple hard-coded implementation of the insurance service methods, write insurance application and process insurance application. As we can see down here, the insurance service impl is annotated with add service. This marks the class as a business facade, which makes this a candidate for injection by add auto wired in the insurance SOAP web service endpoint. In a production environment, this service will typically interface with a back end database and perhaps a business rule service as well. Now looking at our actual insurance web service endpoint class. As we can see, it is annotated with at endpoint. This marks it as an at component type suitable for handling XML messages in Spring Web Services and makes it eligible for component scanning. The insurance WS endpoint class requires the insurance service business service to operate. So we inject the dependency via the constructor and annotate it with at auto wired. The at payload root annotation tells Spring Web Services that the insurance application method is suitable for handling XML messages. The sort of message that this method can handle is indicated by the annotation values. In this case, it can handle XML elements that have the insurance request local part and the namespace URI, as indicated here. The insurance application method is the main handling method, which gets passed with the insurance request element from the incoming XML message. The add request payload annotation indicates that the insurance application request parameter should be mapped to the payload of the request message. With these values, we invoke a method on the business service. Typically, this will result in a database transaction being started and some records being altered in the database. But not in our case, as we've seen, we have just hard-coded our methods. 
Finally, we define an insurance response return type and an add response payload annotation, which indicates to Spring Web Services that the response message will be the XML insurance response. Now that we are done with our overview, well, let's go to the IntelliJ coding section in our next video.